Hello friends, this is Santanam from Smart Leaders IAS. In this video, we will be looking at the editorials which came on the 24th of February. The first article that we are going to look at is titled Adopting a Wait and Watch Approach. This article deals with the recent bilateral visit of the Iranian president with the Indian Prime Minister in New Delhi. Both countries did not have many expectations because uh, arising out of this meeting and they both had their own reasons for not having such high expectations and we will look at them one by one. Firstly, they were both preoccupied. In the case of Iran, the future of the Iran nuclear deal hangs in the balance because the current US President Donald Trump opposes it very very strongly. If the sanctions against Iran comes up again, there is a very high possibility that Iran will again suffer economically and cripple in terms of trade and commerce. And as far as India is concerned, India is very very wary about the growing Chinese footprint in the Indo-Pacific region and its own Sark neighborhood. But we used to understand that there was a time when we both had a very very good relationship. In the 1990s, India, Iran and Russia all supported the Northern Alliance in Afghanistan against the Pakistan-backed Taliban. So, in that time, the countries used to work together and India and Iran shared a very good friendship leading to improved trade and commerce. However, after President Mohammad Ahmadinejad started Iran's nuclear program and tried to have very ambitious plans with regards to missile development and nuclear weapons development, the United States and many European countries decided to impose sanctions on Iran and because of those global sanctions, India was not able to do trade with Iran. And it was precisely during this period that India itself was trying to get its own nuclear deal signed with the US in 2007. So it was during this period the relationship between India and Iran was very turbulent. So let's look at the uncertainties of the Iran nuclear deal. What happens if US withdraws from Iran nuclear deal? The first thing is third country companies for like companies from India will actually attract US sanctions for dealing with Iran if the US withdraws from the sanction and if Indian companies continue to do business with Iranian companies then Indian companies will also face sanctions by the US and US being a very very strong economy and the world's largest economy their sanctions do mean it is a great blow to the Indian economy. The uncertainty with the continuance of Iran nuclear deal is hanging in a balance since the time Donald Trump won the US presidential election. And to add salt to the wound, Israel and Saudi Arabia accept US president's position, the current US president's position, that the Iran nuclear deal is not fair and it has to be rolled back. Because these two countries are afraid of Iran's aggressive stance and posturing in the region. But there were still some positive outcomes with regards to the meeting between the Iranian president and the Indian prime minister. Nine MOUs were signed between the two countries and there is a talk about building an aluminium smelter plant and a urea plant through Indian investments in the Chabahar region. Here is the Chabahar region and there is also a talk about a railway link to Afghanistan from Chabahar which is which goes like this and this railway link will help Indian goods to be shipped to Chabahar and from here they can be sent to Afghanistan and also to Central Asian countries. And apart from this, India and Iran are now talking about a potential alternative channel for transactions in rupee real denominations instead of using US dollars. Because if the US decides to put sanctions on Iran again, using US dollars is not going to help do trade with Iran. So India and Iran are trying to come to an agreement where Iran and India can deal their economic commercial uh, transactions with rupee and real currencies itself. Moving on to the next article, which is titled, Grid Stability is Key, which also came on the 24th of February. So this article deals with the ambitious plan of the government of India to help farmers earn from solar power generation. Instead of transmitting electricity directly to farmers, the government is saying that the farmers themselves can build their own solar microgrids. They can generate electricity for their own irrigation purposes and any excess or surplus in power generation by their solar uh, power plants will be purchased by the government itself. So let's jump into the article. The Council on Energy, Environment and Water reports that there are already 1,42,000 solar pumps in India and the government wants to expand it to 1 million pumps 
solar pumps by 2021. And with regards to this, the 2018 union budget has allocated close to 48,000 crores for the Kusum project. As I said earlier, the government will be purchasing the surplus power production which is been by the solar electric plants of the farmers. And this they will do with the help of the distribution companies. And since there is less transition and more energy production, the estimate says that there will be a drop in the losses because of distribution and transmission from the current 23% to 12% which means we will be producing more energy with less losses. But there is a problem in this project which is grid stability. See power grids require balancing which means that they need to be supplied with constant electric power. They need to have 24 7 power supply without any blackout and the currently installed electrical grids created to depend on reliable and controllable power generators such as coal, oil and hydroelectric power stations. These sources of energy are reliable and they can be produced at the producer's instant. However, the energy produced by solar and wind power are fluctuating and wind power is produced majorly during seasons in a year which means there is a long duration of time during which there is no power generated through solar and wind power stations. When that is the case, they need backing from coal based energy because coal based energy can be produced at any time of the day during any time of the year. So whenever there is fluctuation in the solar and wind energy, coal based energy can substitute them. This problem is not specific to India only, this is being faced by countries across the world and all those countries look at solar and wind power as a energy management problem because sometimes there is surplus of solar energy which cannot be so stored and sometimes there is deficiency of energy because of some climatic reasons like there is less daylight or there is a cover of clouds because of which solar power generation is also reduced. So it is not entirely reliable and those developed countries look at this as a energy management problem. Uh, but for India which is already short in energy supply, this is not only an energy management problem, it is also a capacity management problem. The conclusion is the plan of the government to induct solar water pumps with agricultural sector with farmers is welcome. And the excess power generation which is produced by these solar uh, pumps is also going to be purchased by the government and that is also a welcome step because that is going to lead to discouraging of over utilization of groundwater. Because if there is excess power present and the farmers decide to use and consume that excess power by themselves, they will start exploiting the groundwater more and more. So because of that the groundwater is going to get depleted. Now because the government is willing to purchase the surplus power, the farmers are not going to use the power generated beyond their requirement and hence the groundwater table is maintained and used judicially. The author of this article states that more grid stability can be achieved by integrating the grids into all India grids which means energy sharing will be made easier. Also advances in storage technology will help in improving the grid stability of solar and wind power stations. <laughs>